In today's video, we are going to look at the best country in Europe to go to as an au pair. And we are also going to look at why this country is the best au pair country for especially you as a third country national. Let's say you're from Africa or you are from Asia. So you want to stay to the very end of this video because I'm going to share with you all the details of how to be an au pair in Europe, what are the requirements, how do you get your au pair visa, what is the age limit and all that. So stay to the very end. Um, if you are seeing my face for the first time, my name is Eva Mtali. Um, welcome to this channel. Uh, we talk mostly about travel. I share with you guys my travel escapades to the different parts of the world. I am on a mission to visit all the 195 UN recognized countries in the world, currently at somewhere above 100. Um, another maybe 70 or 60 to go. And then, um, so I've always shared those in my vlogs. Um, I also share relocation tips. How do you immigrate to another country? What options are there for you? Um, especially if you are looking to do so without the help of an agent. I also share with you opportunities to travel for short time, whether those are conferences like in Canada, in Germany, in the US, or just around the world. And I also share with you visa guides. So if any of those topics are interesting to you, you want to make sure you are subscribed to the channel and also do hit the notification bell, which is on the right hand side of the subscribe button. That was a long one. <laughs> if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for always keeping it real here. Thank you for always um, coming to watch the videos. I appreciate your time and you are welcome back again. So how we roll here as you come onto the video, please do let me know where you are watching me from in the comment section below. Say hello. And um, yeah, it helps also if you would give the video a thumbs up. I know it's a little early in the video, but trust me, you're going to like what I'm going to be talking about. So guys, without much further ado, so in this realm of cultural exchange and international childcare, countries around the world are looking for individuals from third world countries such as yours. Africa, Asia, um, to enrich their experiences as au pairs, learn the culture, and as they do so, learn the language and also help them with childcare. So the country today I'm talking about, which happens to be one of the best countries in Europe, like it has such picturesque landscapes, it has a rich cultural heritage and very, very robust social security measures. This country provides a nurturing environment for you as an au pair, to not only explore new culture, but also to enjoy the benefits and the protections it provides for you. Guys, we are looking at Austria, not Australia, we are looking at Austria. So we are going to delve a little deeper into why Austria is the best destination for third world country nationals, that is people from Africa or Asia, who are aspiring to be au pairs. Um, I would also highlight the key aspects such as um, the working hours, the remuneration, social security insurance, and the visa appointment system as well. So before we even delve into the specifics of uh, being an au pair in Austria, it is crucial to comprehend the essence of the au pair program. So an au pair basically is a young person. Um, typically between the age of 18 and 28 who travels to a foreign country to live with a host family um, and assist with childcare and light household duties in exchange for a room, boarding, and a little stipend. So that's what you're going to be doing as an au pair. So this cultural exchange opportunity allows you as an au pair to immerse yourself in a new culture, improve your language skills, and probably if you're very lucky to build lifelong skills. So when it comes to Austria, what are the eligibility requirements to work as an au pair in Austria? So number one, you must be at least 18 years of age, but not more than 28 years old, okay? Number, number two, if you have been assigned an agent by an agency, let's say, let's say you, you, you've been recruited by an agency, to work as an au pair in Austria, the agency must hold the required licenses. They're not just gonna get any um, agent mui too. It must be a licensed um, agency. And in the description box below, you'll find 
some of these agencies that are licensed by the government of Austria. And then number three, you must not have worked as an au pair in Austria for longer than one year within the last five years. Okay, so within the last five years, if you've worked for more than one year, you cannot go back and au pair in Austria. And then you must also be able to demonstrate the nature of the work and the remuneration paid for it are consistent with what an au pair does. So specifically, you're going to use your time as an au pair in Austria to get to know the country and its people and to improve your German language skills that you've already acquired in your home country with the help of the host family, okay? And then secondly, you as an au pair, you will be taken into the host family unit, which is defined as at least one parent or guardian and their children or a child. And you will carry out light household duties, including childcare. And then number three, you as an au pair must have a minimum command of the German language, which must be acquired at a school, on a semester abroad, or on a language course. So like if let's say you're in Kenya or any other country for that matter, I would encourage you to go to any of the GOAT institutes. In Nairobi, we have one here around anniversary towers. That's where the GOAT Institute is. And wherever else you are in the world, I would encourage you to go to the GOAT Institute because you're going to get a certificate and it is recognized by the German embassy in your country. Um, so you must have a minimum command of the German language and you must have a certificate for it before you begin your employment as evidenced by your school certificate, I've said that. And then last but not least, you must have confirmation written in German or English and uh, that you will improve your command of German by living together with the host family. So they must send you a letter that you're going to improve your German skills by living with them. So now let's go back to the title of today's video. Why is Austria the best au pair country destination? What benefits? do you get by working as an au pair in Austria that you might not find, let's say, in Germany or in France or any other country for that matter? That's what um, I want us to look at today. So the number one um, advantage of being an au pair in Austria is the limited working balance. Sorry, the limited working hours, which basically gives you work-life balance. So one of the primary reasons Austria stands out as an ideal destination for au pairs is the emphasis on work-life balance. So Austrian regulations strictly limit au pairs to a maximum of 18 working hours per week. Literally 18 working hours per week. So you can very easily do three hours per day. If let's say you're working um, six days a week, you can literally just be working for three hours a day. Or if let's say you're working for um, six um, hours, uh, sorry, six hours per day, you're going to work for three days maximum, and then four days you're going to be on off. How cool is that? So this is to ensure that you, as an au pair, you have ample time to explore Austria, um, attend any language courses, and immerse yourself in cultural activities without feeling overwhelmed by excessive work commitments. Whether that actually happens once you land into these homes is a story for another day. So this balance is particularly beneficial for you as a third country national who may be seeking opportunities for your own personal growth. So if let's say you want to go and date somebody, get a chance to do so <laughs> and explore what the country has. Or even just go and visit the universities and see what else is there on offer apart from this German language course, okay? So if you compare in Germany, for example, au pairs work for 30 hours a week, which includes babysitting and with a maximum of six hours daily, according to the German employment agency. Um, and then, but the beauty of working as an au pair in Germany is that you are required to have at least four evenings off and one and a half complete days free per week. So that kind of balances off. So if you go back to France, for example, um, working hours for an au pair in France, if you are from a non-EU country, you're not allowed to work for more than 25 hours per week, babysitting including. So you can see generally Austria has the, what can I say, has like the most work-life balance. You work for the least 
ours comparatively as um, the other au pairs in other of the European countries. Let's go to number two reason why Austria is the best country for you to move to as an au pair is the fair remuneration and legal protection. So how much do you get paid as an au pair in Austria? So Austria prioritizes fair treatment and just compensation for their au pairs. So according to the Austrian General Social Security Act, that is ASVG, the minimum monthly remuneration for an au pair is set as 500.91 euros per month. If you do that in Kenya shillings, let us do the math, 500.91 euro to kenya shillings comes to 85000 um 85000 and what 456 i don't think it's bad money when you're being given accommodation and everything else so this amount aligns with the monthly low pay threshold emphasizing austria's commitment to ensuring that au pairs receive reasonable compensation for their services. So guys, imagine you're working 18 hours a week, which comes to less than 60 hours a month. And um, no, actually it comes to around 52 hours a month and you get paid 500 euros. For an 18 year old or a 20 some year old, I think it's decent pay, yeah? So um, additionally, as an au pair in Austria, you are entitled to 15 monthly salary payments a year. I hope you guys heard me. Not 12. So 12 months, let's say if you work for a whole year, that's 12 months. But if you work for a whole year, you are entitled to a further, it's like a bonus for an additional three months pay. So that comes to a total of 15 monthly salary payments a year, which includes two months pay for paid leave guys are you listening two months paid leave and then one month's pay for christmas holiday pay so you're literally being paid for 15 months and you only work for 12 because you're gonna go for no actually you're gonna work for less because you get two months um paid leave so that leaves 10 and then you have the christmas so you're literally working 10 months but you get paid 15 months and um inclusive of that is two months um leave and one month Christmas holiday pay. Hey, so these legal protections provide a safety net for you as a third party national, assuring you of a stable and secure experience. Number three reason why you should consider Austria as the best country in Europe for you to au pair is a comprehensive social security measure. So before a host family can employ you as an au pair, they must register for statutory social security under the asvg that i've already mentioned above so this step not only ensures that au pairs are legally employed but also provides them with comprehensive social security coverage so this includes health insurance pension contributions and other benefits which offers you as a third country national a level of security and support that may not be available to you in your home country number four reason why you should consider austria as your country for au pair is accommodation and sustenance so in addition to the monetary benefits austria ensures that au pairs have access to free accommodation and sustenance so the best part is that these contributions made by host families towards your private medical insurance your language um, courses or cultural events are not considered remuneration for social security purposes. So they can't like refuse to give you social security because they already gave you a room to sleep in. Yeah. So this exemption not only makes operating in Austria financially attractive, but it also demonstrates the country's commitment to fostering a positive and inclusive cultural exchange experience. For you now let's talk about the visa appointment system for coming to europe as an au pair so i have looked at different um countries um visa schengen visa appointment systems in kenya i don't know about other countries but so far looks like it is just a mess 
like oh my goodness can we even talk about france for example which used to be my favorite country for getting schengen visas but now oh my goodness even just to get an appointment is like trying to get a phd but to look at um austria's appoint visa appointment system is so direct like you can get your visa appointment for an austrian visa in kenya by simply clicking a button they have like the system the online system that they use it has where in fact let me just open it and show it to you guys it's so simple like let me just show you and then we'll even compare what is that one um i had it somewhere found it it's a very oh yeah here it is let me show you guys guys this is the website where you make your appointment you can see that appointment.bmeia.gov.gv.at office i've put nairobi office and you can see here austrian appointment system my german people you can read that and you can change automatically when you load this website it comes in douche but you can um exchange to english you can change to english so you can see here do the reservation so i'll just come here i've entered nairobi then i'll say reservation for um residence permit for example okay and then i go to next and then you can see i book the number of persons if it's one if it's two if it's more oh, actually it's only allowing one and then I go to next. You can see there's all that story written there. I don't know what they're saying. I don't even really care. And then you can see here the appointments that are available. You can see these. As I'm shooting this video today, which is 26th of December. Oh, come on. Focus. Oh. Yeah, I'm shooting the video on 26th of December. Guys, look down there on the far right bottom of the page 26th december 2023 and you can see the first available appointment date is the week of 27th um, may so that is exactly december january february march april may five months from today this is what they have available on uh no wait okay they have um 527 to so I don't know. Let's try. I don't know what this means. To six two. Is it February? Maybe we try next week and see. Oh, I think it's their system which has a problem. Yeah. So you can see. It's here showing. Week before you see you can check. So the earliest available is twenty seventh of May. And you can see the time is nine thirty. It even tells you the time. And then if you go to the next week, you just click on next week. And you can see all the slots are variable, including the time and everything. Now, let's look at the French system, for example. This is the Ambassade of Conseil and I hope you can see them. And it tells you that there are slots. So it tells you calendar, visas, blah, blah, blah. You can select up to one place. So you can see duration, seven minutes. And then it says the times displayed are based on the time zone of the consulate. So you can see here, no appointments are available at the moment, but slots will be posted in the coming days. You can ask to be informed when new slots are made available. So I'm like, why can't they just put the system there for you to click at the auction? So you can see you have to come here and click and enter your email address. You can see I've already put mine there so that they can tell me. And I'm just like... The hell can't they just do like the Austrian one? So guys, you can see the Austrian system is so streamlined. It's so easy to make a visa appointment and like the French embassy that we just saw, but whatever. Anywho, so how do you find a host family in Austria as an au pair? Remember for you to get this visa, you must have a host family. So what you're going to do is that you need to make sure that you search your, you start your search process very, very early on. As you can see right now, I would encourage you start by booking your visa appointment date. Don't wait until like you find a host family. That's when you book your visa appointment. You can see right there, um, the dates are 
five months out. So by the time you start getting a host family, you start the visa process. If you're not very, very careful, you might get a host family, but there'll be no visa appointment um, slots for you. So fortunately, there are several platforms and agencies that specialize in connecting au pairs with suitable families in Austria, but you can also search for your own family by yourself. Um, you can um, do so by, for example, just start your own TikTok account, target those families in Austria, and just let them know that you're happy to work as an au pair. That is just one way. Um, so, but there are other websites. I have never worked with them. So everything I'm going to be telling you here is just based on my research. Do your own due diligence. So the first one I found is Au Pair World. Au Pair World, okay? And then there is Great Au Pair. Great Au Pair. And I'll link all of them in the description box below. And then there is the Austria National Agency for International Youth Cooperation. So all these can facilitate the matching process for you. So as a prospective au pair, just go to this website, aupairworld.com, greataupair.com, and then create your profile, browse through your host family listings, and then engage in discussions to ensure that you are compatible with those families that you think you like. So in terms of applying for the visa, you just have to come to that website. And again, I'm going to leave a link. You can go and find all this information there. And um, the maximum age for which you can apply as an au pair is 27. That's the maximum age for which you can apply because the maximum you can work is one year in Austria. So they want to make sure by the time you're finishing your one year, you're not more than 28 years of age. So what are the requirements for you to apply for an Austrian um, au pair visa? So number one, you're going to need to ensure that you have a valid passport, duh, okay? And then number two, you have to make sure that your host family has enrolled you with the Austrian Employment Office. So two weeks prior to you starting your stay, make sure the host family contacts the AMS and then which is the Austrian Employment Office to register you and what they are going to need is to evidence of your proficiency in the German language. Remember, if it's not on paper, it doesn't have, it didn't happen. So it doesn't matter how beautiful your German is. If there's no certificate to prove it from a very, um, from an institution that is, um, what, what is that? The accredited, then just know you're going nowhere. So make sure I've, as I've advised, go to Goethe Institute is the one I know of. And then there must be a signed copy of your au pair contract outlining crucial aspects of your stay. So once both you as the au pair and the family meet the AMS requirements, that is the Austria Employment Office, an application confirmation is issued, typically valid for six week, months, and it can be extended for an additional six months. So step number three, therefore, will be your visa application. So once you have received the AMS application confirmation, you as the au pair can then apply for a visa at the Austrian embassy or consulate utilizing what they call German form. And that again is linked here. So this confirmation serves as the foundation for both you, the au pair and the um, uh, host family. And this is what you're gonna use to apply for your au pair visa as well as your resident permit okay so i've already said um what you're gonna require for your visa application of course you're gonna need your passport number two you're gonna need your residence permit application which you're gonna get the the the, the form is available online and then you're gonna need your birth certificate or the equivalent because remember they have to confirm that you're not more than 28 years of age you're gonna need your current passport photo you're going to need your police clearance certificate, guys, especially if you're in Kenya. If you're thinking of going as an au pair, you have to start all these processes at least six months from the date you intend to go because, like, certificates of good conduct are just taking forever to come out, yeah? And then you're going to need comprehensive health insurance covering the entire au pair stay. So if you're going for six months, you need comprehensive insurance for six months. If you're going for a year, you need comprehensive insurance for a year. If you're going for nine months, you need comprehensive insurance for nine months. So make sure you get that as well. And then you're going to need your contract between you and the host family. And then you're going to need the application confirmation from the AMS. Additional documents may be requested and foreign documents will require 
certified German translation. So in terms of visa processing times for au pairs from Africa and Asia, it can extend up to four months sometimes. So this obviously is going to affect your 12 month au pair stay. So the best advice for you is to start as early on as possible. So if you as the au pair, you reside in a country other than your own, the residence permit can be sought at the Austrian embassy in that country. So upon approval, the Austrian embassy issues you a visa for entry and you as the au pair obtains your residence permit once you get to Austria. So other, um, in terms of the social insurance system, which is going to be your step number four, you need to be included in the as an au pair in the Austrian social insurance system. So upon your arrival in Austria, you as the au pair should be promptly registered with the public social insurance system. And this one, your host should help you with. So in conclusion, it obviously shows that Austria is the quintessential destination for any third world country national who is aspiring to be an au pair because of those reasons I've just um, already shared with you guys from limited working hours, fair remuneration to comprehensive um, social security measures. And then there's the, of course the additional perks like free accommodation and um, the, the opportunity for you to actually go and have your cultural exchange and language learning. So those are just some of the perks for you as an au pair in Austria. So this not only contributes to you, your growth as an individual, but you get an opportunity to do something meaningful by contributing to the well-being of host families and you also gain invaluable experiences while you are at it. So guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was um, and you still haven't given it a thumbs up, please do so. Um, leave a sweet comment below and do share this video with other 18 to 28 year olds that you think would benefit from it or their parents or even their guardians. I will see you on the next one. Bye guys.